Hey guys, it's the evening on Memorial Day and it's really hot outside, but I wanted to knock out a video for you guys on the stereo install. I think I've mentioned online that we actually did this, but I wanted to walk you through the steps, why we did it, uh, what the problems were with the stereo that came with the boat, and the problems that are solved by this new stereo that's really the only one I could find that would fit and it works great. Let's cue the music. All right, so the old stereo that came with the boat is the dual MGH-37BT. That's a round gauge size stereo, and it's looked to me to be a little old in its age, you know, its useful life as a product, and we just really had a lot of problems with it. Uh, after a few months, the actual faceplate on our first one fell off, and we got that replaced under warranty. It was no problem. They sent a new one. Didn't even require us to send the old one back. But it was an inconvenience. I had to go back and, you know, actually figure out how to detach the radio from the face. And, you know, it, it was pretty easy just plugging in a uh, connector. And off I went. But, again, a hassle. And then from Lisa's perspective, uh, there are a dozen apps, it seems like, on the store for dual stereos. You had to find the right one, had to get it configured, and then it would give you some zone adjustment, but it really seemed like a hack in that it was really just using the faders and calling those zones. And the, uh, the whole idea, concept of the stereo just really didn't, to me, seem to be a great idea. So... We went on a search for a new stereo, but there is so much, such limited space on the R23. You've got about three or four inches of depth behind this dashboard. You've got the small area here. I didn't want to encroach too much into the area for the Garmin display because I may want to get the little larger one at this at some point. This is the uh, 942, I may want to go to the 12 at some point. I have to figure out how to work that in to the helm. And uh, just finding one that would fit and that, was, that could mount in there was important, right? But I also wanted things like the NMEA 2000 connectivity. Had to have dual zone support because my wife will be in the cockpit. I'll be in here doing something else, and she'll have the music on out there, not on in here, or vice versa. And, uh, or we want it both places, or we're in here listening and we don't want to bother our neighbors at the marina with sound coming from the cockpit. So zone control was very important to us, as well as just it had to look nice, fit in with the dash, and work well. Sound good, work well. That's what we wanted. Reliable Bluetooth connectivity and just an overall much better stereo. And what we found was the JL Audio MM50. This was the uh, uh, one that I found that would fit. It had the features that I wanted. And I gave it a shot, installed it, and we haven't looked back. So what's nice about this stereo is it does have a nice display. Uh, the... Lots of options for phone connectivity, those kind of things. A bright screen, but that you can tie into your uh, nav lights so that when you uh, turn on your nav lights, it goes into a dark mode. So you preserve your eyesight somewhat. And the uh, connectivity of devices is flawless. You, uh, you can see... My uh, iPhone is connected right now. It just it connected. My wife's iPhone is set as the favorite because she's the DJ between the two of us. But it just really fit well. It's a good stereo. I connected it to our enemy A2000 network so I can see it on the Garmin chart, plot, chart plotter. And the install itself required some major surgery on the helm, required the addition of more 
uh, NMEA 2000 ports, but that gave me the opportunity to clean that up. I now have two quad NMEA 2000 connectors with a power connector in between. So if you look at me here, we've got the helm. You can see I've taken the gauges off. And what, if you look in this back corner, you'll see the top of the backbone here. And as you work your way down, you'll see the different T-connectors for the NMEA 2000 backbone that's, that starts all the way down there. And if you're wondering how to get to them, well, you take all the gauges off. Now, I don't know what you're gonna do if you have, if you don't have the autopilot, this is a, uh, a full piece here. This is, there's no hole here to access. But once you take the gauges off, you've got pretty easy access to all the different components and what I'm going to do is take all the different T's out and replace them with two single quad T's so that I can both shorten the backbone, make it easier to access, um, save some uh, resistance in the actual NEMA 2000 network, balance the load a little bit and give me one extra connector. I've added a couple of things that use the backbone. Uh, so, um, you'll see some twin connectors here in, in my NEMA 2000. The factory ships all with single T's. I went to double T's as I added components to save space. And so now, uh, I'm going all the way with two quad connections. I'm going to put those in and then I'll have the seven NMEA 2000 backbone uh, drops and one spare. So I've got in evenly distributed power to both sides of my enemy 2000 network stack and there were some long long cables back here for the Garmin uh, devices. It came with like six foot cables and those were tucked back in there deep. I didn't even realize that but uh, I removed those and replaced those with one foot cables to give me much cleaner cabling behind the helm and all in all aside from cutting into the dash which was a little intimidating uh, the solution works really well it, it fits with four screws from the front so you're not back there trying to get a connector tightened the uh, only other thing that might be intimidating if you haven't done any electrical work is splicing in the new harness and that's just really if you do it one at a time color by color you'll be in good shape so uh, let me walk you through exactly what we did. Uh, I don't have pictures of everything, so I'm going to describe it, and I'll put pictures up for the stuff that we have. First thing was removing the old round dual MGH 37BT. That was done by getting into the head area, pulling down the door. There's a bracket on the back of the stereo that kind of holds it against the face of the helm. And got that loosened, disconnected the connector, and the stereo comes right out. There's a, a, a big multi-core connector, an antenna, um, and a couple of other connections, and that's it, right? So uh, with that, I took the stereo kind of template and taped it up here, figured out where I needed to cut so I could do my marks, and I used a um, one of the oscillating saws to actually do the work, and that worked really well. I taped the a whole area off to kind of prevent any scarring or um, any, any breakout. This is a plastic piece of faux wood, and then a piece of plywood that's got the um, upholstery covering it, and then the fiberglass of the actual helm box itself. So you're actually cutting through three layers of material, three different layers of material. The plastic's relatively easy, the wood's relatively easy, the fiberglass is a little firmer. But And then to do the connections on the back, it was really a lot easier to uh, take off the autopilot. You take off the autopilot and the stereo and you can see back in there to the NMEA 2000 backbone. If you don't know where it is, it runs up this side here. Pieces, we screwed that in. Then I went behind and handled all of the splicing of the connectors. And that's just wire by wire with 
uh, heat shrink, butt splice connectors, get you a connector tool. If you don't have that, you're going to need that on the boat anyway for other electrical projects. Splice all those connectors, hook everything back up, your power. I did run a wire, like I said, over to the nav switch for dark mode, and that works great. I love that feature. And um, once you do that, you're pretty much all set. A nice, simple solution, good-looking solution. I looked high and low for any other stereo that would fit because when I saw this one and measured it and was looking at the online uh, the measurements online and everything and it did fit, I almost couldn't believe it after looking at everything else. So this is the JL Audio MM50, MM50. Uh, it's got a nice color display. It fits in an R23. I can't vouch for the R25. I know I think the R25 has uh, the dual stereo as well. Uh, but we're much happier with our audio experience with the MM50. And we've had it in place for about five months now and uh, much happier with our audio experience on the boat and it looks a lot better it matches matches the dash a lot better than the the dual round stereo did so um give it a, give it a look online it's it's not cheap but it is jl audio so it's a quality system and uh again it fits and there's not a fusion stereo out there that's going to fit there's very few stereos you're going to find that are marine rated that will fit in the space that you're given on the R23. So give it a look. Uh, tell me what you think. Do you guys think the stereo on the R23 is an issue or have you been completely happy with it? Let's talk about that in the comments. Thanks and uh, we'll talk to you later.